Uh, I did, there's a small question. Uh, why, why did it become, you were elected in the 21st Ward and then it became the 34th Ward. It's funny that a number, uh, a ward in the 30s would be up there when there's all teens uh, in the South Side. No, but it doesn't work like that. Usually in redistricting, uh, Each ward, it, the city is divided into uh, 50 wards, so that in order for uh, when wards become overpopulated, like the 21st initially was on the west side, yes. and then it moved to the south side in the redistricting. And the same is true on the north side. You had a ward, and I think I'm, uh, I think the, uh, I'm trying to think who was the commitment of the 34th ward before it was over around Belmont someplace. Uh, uh, and what they do is just uh, the ward that they take out then they replace it in the geographical area where that they uh, need uh, to fill in the numbers so that we still the 50 so that right. you, you have a, a, a sort of uh, not a continuous flow uh, of numbers. Now they'll be redistricting again this year, uh, next year for after the census this year. Right. And the, the same is true with the legislative district as sure. well. All right. Um, there, uh, what would you consider in, in the time that you served on the city council uh, the, the, the most significant local issue? I'm during those times, um, you would have issues that arose and some of them had to deal with housing, some of them had to do deal with uh, police protection, uh, uh, some had to deal with employment, some had to deal with crime issues, uh, others education, but during those times, uh, uh, Things would occur that uh, would uh, get to a point where that they became issues. And right now, I'm searching and trying to think of, but I don't I have any particular ones that come to mind. That so it was the the same issues that basically I mean are are, hey, it's are a, there today. Yeah, it's sort of like a revolving. Type of thing. So the, in 70, uh, uh, 73, he named you president pro tempore. Uh, but did your relationship change when with the mayor after you, were, you sort of uh, took a strong position on the, uh, the Hampton? No, but I had taken a position on the Hampton before then. That's right. It was before that was 69. Yes, I was 69. Yeah. No, but I was made president pro temporary. And shortly after I was made pre president pro temporary, the mayor took ill and was away from yeah. the uh, city hall for a period of time so that I was one of the first president pro temporaries who really had an opportunity to sit in the chair through budget hearings and all of those things 
heretofore, like Metcalf had been president pro temporary, Holman had been president pro temporary. I'm talking about, right. But during those periods, the mayor was never away where the, they would have any extended period of sitting uh -huh. there. And we used to talk about uh, how the mayor never left the chair. Uh, and we talked about uh, the strength of his bladder and all of those <laughs> things. <laughs> so he really never left. No, he would stay there. The period. Now he like doing budget hearings or something, you know, in the prolonged budget hearings, he might get out of the chair and turn it over. But President Pro Temporary, prior to my period of time, never enjoyed the, uh, the time that I did where you had to rule on parliamentary matters in the city council and all of those things. And, you know, I had some of the uh, pretty active. I had Seymour Simon <laughs> and all of those who was in the council at that time. Bill Singer, was he in the council then? Or had he left already? Mm, Bill might have left, but I know uh, Simon was in there. Sperling was in there. Dupree. Dupree, yeah. So I had, uh, you know, some pretty active minds, and, and as a matter of fact, a couple of times they even challenged the ruling of the chair. And, uh, yeah. um, so uh, when the mayor died, in uh, December of 1976, uh, you you were uh, president pro temp. That is correct. Right, and and uh, there was a time when it looked like you could very well be the mayor until six months till they had time to schedule election. Would you first of all talk about the mayor's death and then that that political time after that? Well, I was at my law office when I got a call from the fire department indicating that uh, the mayor had uh, passed away. Uh, evidently, he had been uh, at some uh, affair on the southeast side yes. uh, that morning and had this attack, and they took him to the hospital, and then they called to tell me that he had uh, passed away. And uh, I'd left from my law office. I was at my law office at 123 West Madison. And I went uh, over to City Hall at that time. And this was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, what was your personal feeling? Well, it was something that you couldn't believe that it had happened. I was shocked, and so it was the first feeling of, uh, did this really happen? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, what's our responsibility now? But uh, early on, uh, he had been sick so that these issues had been raised about uh, what would happen in the event of his death. Okay, so let's go forward now for that, that critical period of time that ended up with locks getting changed. Would you talk about that? Well, we went over and I think I had some other persons with me, I don't remember who they were at this particular time, but I indicated to them that under the uh, law that we have, that I was the uh, survivor. I mean, I would be the uh, person who would have to be the interim until the council uh, uh, passed legislation to change that. 
uh, to and uh, was aware of the fact that we could elect one of our own. As a matter of fact, I talked to the Attorney General, Bill Scott, at the time, and he, because it's customary, usually in matters like that, uh, his office uh, would give an opinion. Uh, it never got to that, but uh, I had talked with him and he shared my view. I see. Um, so then what happened? Well, what happened then, uh, they, uh, Ken Sane and uh, I think uh, Tom Donovan and a group of others, well, uh, they took the position on Corporation Council. Corporation Council at that time was, you know, subsequently became a, uh, a judge. Curry? Uh, Richard Curry? No. Uh, well, anyway, uh, uh, and so that we were able to work out in uh, the president of First National Bank at that time, a little short guy, yeah. Not this just No. no. Uh, I forgot. Well, go ahead. Well, anyway, we had a meeting, and I'm trying to re remember where we had the meeting, but we agreed that uh, we would not take any steps that would uh, injure the city uh, in its business relationship with banks and finance and bonds and all of those things so that we agreed that we would uh, have a caucus and then have a meeting. Right. And, and at that, I think what I have to do is hold because we've got to change tapes. Okay. Uh, you you had this meeting, and I, I, I'd like to talk about that a little bit because you mentioned, what, what was the president of the First National Bank at that meeting? Yes. Okay. And uh, so, uh, and uh, who who? Well, was their major concern, and you had during that time, you had a lot of people in uh, that were trying to offer their. Uh, involvement to minimize the adverse effect that it might have on the city. And, uh, you know, they didn't want to, and I remember meetings on the South Side uh, that I was invited to. I was invited to Operation Push and many of the others where that they wanted to go through a mock swearing in and all of those things, but we were able to work it out on a basis where that uh, we would uh, hold our council meeting, and and uh, at that time I knew that I I talked to all the council members, those who supported me and those who didn't, in terms of their possible vote and I uh, knew that I didn't have the votes to be elected as interim mayor so that uh, uh, we were able to subsequently have that meeting, the one that you uh, witnessed, and where the Belandic was elected. And a part of the uh, deal was I became chairman of the Finance Committee. Correct. 